Hi everybody, and welcome to this episode of 10 Minute Tips with me, Micah Hoffman from the OSINT Curious Project. Today we're going to be working on, or this session we're going to be working on, something called a user agent string. Now a user agent string is a client side piece of information that is sent to each of the servers that your browser or tool or mobile application uses and visits. We can see it by looking at the HTTP header of our requests, or we can go to a website that echoes back that content to us. I've created a website called whatyou.info, and it's a pretty simple website. All it does is echo back certain information about my browser to me. Now, here's one of them and my IP address. And then the other one that we're more concerned about is the user agent. Now, this user agent string contains information about my system, and it is changeable by you, the client, you, the user. So just understand that. Now, for uh, our OPSEC or operational security perspective, we need to understand what it tells other websites. And for that, there's useragentstring.com website which will decode the different pieces of the user agent string that I sent. So here we've got Mozilla 5.0, Windows NT 10, and we can look down here to the table and say, oh, Windows NT 10, that's Windows 10 operating system. It's 64 bit and it's running Firefox version 65. Now, every web request that your browser, an app or a tool makes could have this in there and could be telling websites that you are or are not browsing the web normally. This is very important for us to keep in mind as we do our work. Now, let's check it out with some other tools just to show you this, this impact. I'm going to go ahead and, and um, run uh, a Python script. All right, so let's see what Python looks like. If you're running a Python script like like uh, the Harvester or Recon NG, this, the default user agent might be sent to the destination websites. So I'm just going to go into the Python environment here. I'm going to type import requests, and then I'm going to make a request response equals requests dot get HTTP colon slash slash what you dot info. So this makes a re get request to what you dot info, and then let's print the output response text. Now, this is the HTML, which shows up if we view the page source of the whatyou.info page. But let's just scroll up to the your user agent section and see that what's being echoed back is Python request 221. So if you are somebody that is using Python to make requests on websites and aren't changing your user agent string, you're not being as sneaky as you thought you were. To add, to just do one more thing, some of you are familiar with like the curl command. Curl retrieves a website, our web, web page, what you.info. And sure enough, we'll do the exact same thing. If we look up here, your user agent is curl. Now, the same thing happens for wget and for other tools that we might use as well. And each one of these systems allows us to change the header information here. So if I want to be a uh, Toyota Prius Uber car from the future, when I send that, what happens is, is that curl has changed my user agent to be Toyota Prius Uber car from the future. Now, whenever I browse around the internet, that's the user agent string that people are getting or websites are recording about me. Probably not that interesting, but if we take that concept of we have control over changing this, we can really do some cool things. For instance, let's go back to this user agent string .com page and change our user agent. Now, there are lots of add-ons and extensions that you can add to Firefox and Chrome to change this. I've added a couple of them here. This first one, uh, this is user agent switcher with a dash. And then this one over here is another user agent switcher, but it's disabled. 
This one uh, is one that I believe is installed in Buscador, the Linux distribution for OSINTERS. And it allows you to just simply pick whatever you, you want here. So I want to appear like an iPhone. All right, now let's refresh the page. And sure enough, it has changed my user agent to be an iPhone. And this is how it breaks down to any Google Analytics or any other analytics software or web logs that are recording your traffic. And it truly is that simple to, to go ahead and change it. If I want to appear to be coming from a Linux system and using Google Chrome, I can choose those two and boom, we have a Linux system using Chrome version 61. Now, some of you are thinking, well, this is cool, but can I edit these? Absolutely. You can actually just type in your custom, uh, your custom user agent string right here if you want, and then you become that, or you can switch to the default and you can use a different tool. So let's go in here. And so these are the two user agent switchers that I chose. If you're in Firefox, you can look for these two icons. There's a whole bunch of them in there. Let's take a look at this user agent switcher. Now in the options, we actually can scroll down and you see all the different user agents. We can change these. You want to change what the string is. You want to make it look like a piece of malware. You want to do something else. You can even simulate becoming Google or Google spider app that goes out and indexes websites by switching to the Google bot. That's pretty neat for staying in, um, in kind of staying incognito or just blending in. Here again, this is a different user interface for this plugin. If we want to become a Mac Safari 11, we can do that. Hit the refresh page and boom, Macintosh, Intel, Mac, OS X. And you see that we don't look like a Windows system anymore. I think you get that. But there's other reasons for using user agent strings on websites and web apps. One of them is that some sites will change the data that you see depend or change the user interface depending upon what user agent you present. To see this, let's go ahead and go to a marketplace site. Let's go to Amazon.com. Now, I've gone ahead and switched us back to just using the default user agent string. And let's see how, what the site looks like. This is Amazon. This is Amazon's website. And it looks like this on my de on my desktop computer here or my laptop. Now let's change our user agent string to be an iPhone running Safari 11.1 and refresh and see if we get the mobile interface. And we do. You see the entire UI or user interface has changed to be more mobile compliant. This is what it would look like if you were browsing on your mobile device. They want it to be easy to press buttons and, and uncomplicated. So the website that we're visiting has changed based upon the user agent that we're sending it. That's why it's so important to visit websites using different user agents. Or if you want to pretend to be a mobile device, change that user agent, see what happens. In the future, we are going to show you how to change your user agent or change your browser to look more like a mobile device. But that's a tip for another day. I'm out of time right now. This is Michael Hoffman saying, stay OSINT curious.